Hey everyone, today I want to go over how to uh, properly service and remove and even um, install a Briggs and Stratton clutch. So whatever the very first thing is, if you are like me, you have a fuel pump, disconnect the fuel pump, either remove the screws or remove anything that's going to obstruct you from removing this whole cover. Generally, there will be two screws on the top, two screws on the bottom, usually around here and then right down there. Remove that. That way we can take off this whole cover. And sometimes if you have a switch like I do, the wiring can get a little difficult to work around. So be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work around that so we can get it taken off. Now that it's off, there's usually four, sometimes two. If someone's been in there, maybe only one. Maybe you don't even have the screen, but there's usually uh, however many number of screws you have. There are majority of the time, unless yet again, someone's been in here. So they should be about a quarter inch. So we're gonna take those off. Obviously this screen is not the right one. So we might be changing that out, but that's mainly for debris. I would also say your fingers in that situation is considered debris. It's just meant to keep that stuff out there because debris and small engines don't really mush, mish, mish, mush, mesh. There we go, mesh well together. So now we have that. This should just come right off. There we go. Okay, the next part. Majority of the time you are going to have a cast iron flywheel If you don't know if you don't or if you don't know if you do maybe you are um, In a different type of engine and you have a aluminum take a magnet If it sticks to it, that's a cast iron flywheel that's important because if you don't have the tool I'm going to show you, you can take like a big crowbar and kind of wedge it in between some of these fins, but be careful. You don't really want to put a lot of tension on it and you don't want to do it on these fins because these are aluminum, but you basically want to stop the engine from moving. You can fill the cylinder with rope. If you have um, a piston stop, you could put a piston stop in if your engine allows it. If it's a flathead, which I'm sure the clutch is going to be on there. I don't know how your piston stop is going to work, but that's how it is. So this isn't that bad of a clutch. It, it, it would probably work. The problem is it's going to start squealing. Uh, when you start pulling on it, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but all of a sudden you're pulling, you're pulling, you're trying to get it started. It doesn't start the first time and you pull up again and then there's, it's not catching and you end up practically like ripping it out of the, the recoil. So that's why we are doing this to help prevent that. So what we need is this tool. Now, like I said, if you don't have this tool, I would suggest buying it, but if you don't have it, you can wet something in there, stop the cylinder from moving and take like a big pair of pliers. Um, you could take like a, a rod and hit it very gently here. But basically we want to get this taken off. If this is seized on here, you're pretty much guaranteed to have to use this tool. This is a special tool made by Briggs and Stratton. It's not very expensive. If you have a generator, even if you don't, excuse me, a Briggs and Stratton, even if you don't, um, repair engines but if you have an engine with this style of clutch more likely than not you're going to be servicing it a couple times through the time that you have it unless you're just going to get rid of it so let's go ahead and get that taken off i hope i don't have to tell you this but this is going to be a little loud i like to take an impact makes it easier if you have a drill i suppose that can work but it's not going to be the best way see how easy that is This is a lifesaver. Like I said, even if you don't repair engines, if you just have something with this style of clutch, I'd buy it. So even though it wasn't squealing, can you see how this is just not very good? I mean, it's just really, I mean, I wish you could feel it. It's like, it's like you took mud and then you just put it 
a thin layer on there and then you mix it with grease so that's what this is it's not supposed to be like that that should practically be like shiny uh, metal so very last thing we're gonna do before we install is we're gonna have to get that cleaned up but our prize is in here so let's go ahead and get started now we have the clutch off um, we're gonna want to remove this top piece it can be a little tricky especially if the person who had this disassembled before um, put it on incorrectly or when they put that screen on there smashed it down or if it's super bad and just covered in rust then that could also be a problem so this part we will clean but that's not our primary piece here it actually isn't all that bad um, this piece right here on the top anything above here that actually goes into the recoil assembly that is important to clean but it's not super important what you do want to see is uh, the bottom section or review now if there's a lot of um, pitting or big chunks this should have like a predefined edge and this one is pretty good yeah it's a, it's a little marred but that's not bad if these are completely rounded there's no point of continuing you need a new clutch they're not that expensive to begin with so we do have a little washer in there we're gonna take care of that so this really isn't all that bad this is almost completely solid metal except for the obviously the crap so if you need to or you want to use carb clean or brake clean that's fine don't worry about you know ruining any type of rubber material get this out of the way though because the top of it is rubber in most cases and the older ones that could be metal uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started cleaning for these really small areas i like to use this little brush now this brush was a lot newer before but i like to keep them because it's like the perfect size for fitting into like these little crevices um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that you can also do it to the ball bearings but good luck with that one if you do use this method then make sure you're wearing glasses this brush is basically like a golden retriever of Dremel bristle brushes because it shoots hairs everywhere so don't be that person have to go to the hospital because you stabbed yourself in the eye with flying debris so I'll go ahead and get started, I suppose. Now you want to get everything. You want to make sure it's nice and shiny. So it, it can take a little time, but you also want to go inside of the this piece where the shaft is supposed to be. You want to make sure that is also equally as clean and we want to make sure these ball bearings are also clean so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick next part um, I think is pretty important you want to take all the oil off of this so we're gonna take still wearing goggles by the way take brake parts cleaner and take out all of the oil or carb cleaner doesn't really matter clutches should always be dry unless you have a wet clutch these are definitely not that so these should always be dry you do not want any oil at all in here because what you're wanting to do is as the engine is spinning the centrifugal force is going to push all these ball bearings into the edges allowing this to spin freely now if you have oil in there um, or anything really dirt grime rust 
anything, it's going to cause it to kind of get hung up and either it's gonna get stuck in the end and you're never gonna be able to pull the engine over or worse, the engine's gonna start and it's gonna kick the rope out and potentially break your recoil. So if you don't have a Dremel, do whatever you need to do. Um, if it's super rusty, you can soak it in like a vapor rust or vinegar if it really wanted to, you know, whatever you need to. I also took my Dremel and went down the center of this. I do want to blow it out, so cover your ears. See all these little hairs? I don't know if you can, but like I said. The Golden Retriever Dremel Tools. Now that it's done, we can take all this. That's what it's supposed to do. Well, without getting stuck, of course. We could take all these little ball bearings and put them back in their little home. I did try to clean the ball bearings. They weren't really all that bad. One was a little tore up, but it wasn't too bad. Now we just need to put the cover on, which I still need to clean this up real quick. I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up real quick. Because it's rubber, it makes it a little more difficult. I'm just gonna take probably like a rag maybe I will just do it right now it might just come off it does okay good if it's discolored that's fine no one's ever gonna see it but if it has grime that is a problem <sighs> clean and dry that is the name of the game so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on and when you're done, you can either put this whole piece in the vise and kind of crimp it down if it's not wanting to latch down but if it is having difficulties you know do that but usually um, you could just set this over the top and press on it and it will just go back into place so that's not really too much of a of an issue but I do need to get my final ball bearing in there so how this ends up working is when you pull on it these ball bearings are right here and they get stuck like that one is and when it's running all these go in their little caverns and this can spin freely, like I said. So dry is key here. Really want to hammer that home. It's on. Now when you spin it like this, it's nice and free. When you spin it like this, the whole piece is moving. That's good. It's not super nasty, it's not anything. It's pretty decent actually. So we're gonna go ahead and get the shaft cleaned up and get this back installed. Depending on the condition of your shaft, uh, you're gonna wanna do whatever you need to get it clean. I'm gonna start off with some brake clean and just see if majority of that grease slash dirt, you see, uh, will come off. And then I might take some sandpaper that's very, very fine and kind of Go over it, maybe some Scotch Bright, or maybe even the Dremel again. That might be a good idea. Maybe I'll do the Dremel again, but I'm gonna go ahead, spend a little time, get this nice and clean. It's kind of weird. It feels like there's like a ridge or something on it, but um, man, it must be running for a long time. I don't know. I decided to do this. Cover your ears. The threads, eh, they're threads. I'm not going to worry too much about those. Uh, but I do want to get all the dust and stuff off of it. So we're going to put a little more brake clean on there. See, it looked clean. Just like in life, just because it looks clean doesn't mean it is. There we go. So, now this is the part that I usually, whenever I see anything on social media or anything, people have a thousand different ways of doing this. Some people say you need to use this. Some people say you need to use that. You know, it, it's all different, but this is how I like to use. Hopefully you have one clean finger. In 
here, this cap, I have 0W20 motor oil. I would prefer to use ATF, but I don't have any ATF right now for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah. So after we do that, we have anything that we don't want anymore, we can just wipe it off. I go on the threads, the part's not too important. But now we get to install the clutch. So I realized I forgot the little washer that was in there. So when I went to go grab this, I put the washer back in. So the washer's in. Now we just put this back on. We take our magic tool. Put that back on wherever, there we go. Also, if you took out the washer that's in between the flywheel and the clutch, you should put that back. I did not take it off though. There we go. Reinstall your shield and do whatever else you need to do uh, to the engine. But now that sounds pretty nice. That locks up very nicely. You just service the clutch. So this is how I like to do it. Like I said, I would prefer to put ATF in there. You do not want to put anything heavy though. Heavy is just going to make a squeal and potentially break. So light oil. If you don't have any light oil, go get some. Uh, if you're in a complete and total bind, uh, you can run it without oil. I just necessarily wouldn't do it for too long. Uh, you can also put a drop of oil on. There's a little felt pad that's underneath this little metal section. I p looked at it and it seemed a little oily to begin with, so I didn't really bother too much with the felt pad. But it's good to go now. So if you are having a problem that I was having where you're pulling, 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 and it just won't catch, or if you pulled on it and then it ran and then it made it so it wouldn't catch, you have to hit the front of it. Or if you turn it on and it makes a really loud sound and squeal and potentially even ejects the handle, doing this will go will save you. It is important that we put the dust screen on because that dust screen actually holds on this rubber or metal cap, whatever you have. If you do not have that on there, the likelihood of that coming off and exploding is pretty high. So. I know it seems like it's probably useless and even though if like you're like me and you have the wrong one it's better to have the wrong one than none so keep that in mind and other than that you service the clutch uh, this is probably something you're gonna have to do in my experience if you live in a wet area quite often if you live in a rather warm area that's dry you probably never have to do it well maybe once or twice, but uh, where I live, where there's a lot of rain and moisture and humidity, this is a fairly common practice. And if you do it right, you can ensure that it stays right. If you don't want to deal with this, then you can just go ahead and buy a new clutch. But as you saw, it's pretty easy. And for the price of the clutch, you could just buy the clutch tool and you don't have to worry about this happening. Well. Let me rephrase, and you don't have to worry about not having the ability to take it off anymore. You could try to service it on the machine and not actually take it off. It's really difficult if it's a horizontal shaft because you have to put all those little ball bearings in there. But if you really like to have you know, some fun and potentially swearing, go right ahead. I'm not going to say how to have fun. Other than that, have a good day. If this helped you, put a thumbs up. If you like what you see, keep watching and consider subscribing. Follow me on Instagram. I am smallengine101, and I will catch you on the next video. You have a good rest of your day.